Sexual Empowerment, a Critical Analysis. I begin my presentation with the following questions. Is female nudity inherently sexual? And while the hypersexuality of women in media still remains, why was once a subject of feminist critique now a seeming sign of female empowerment? The overt sexual expression of women in media has been an increasing concern in recent feminist literature, which urges me to question, what are the modes of scientific discourse that has led to the modern hypersexuality of women to be seen as a claim to empowerment? I argue that the modes of scientific discourse are historically and culturally contingent and are guided by the Eurocentric male gaze. Post-feminism has simply displaced the sexual objectification of women to self-subjectification. To demonstrate this, I'll be using Foucault's knowledge power conception, as well as his analysis on self-surveillance. In addition, I'll be using Haraway's insight to situated knowledge and Singh's work on supply chain and the human condition to uncover the historical processes of scientific knowledge production that led to our modern understanding of sexual expression of women in capitalist society. This is the infamous picture of Kim Kardashian's Break the Internet. But how does this image have so much power on society? Well, first, we have to look at Kim Kardashian beyond a subject and instead look at the female body as an object of investigation. Power, according to Foucault, is not to be assumed as an external institutional force that governs the public. Instead, power is inextricably linked to knowledge production. Power, therefore, is not objective, rather it is historically contingent. The body under medical and, by extension, societal gaze is categorized, hierarchized, dichotomized, and ultimately controlled with the way in which it is able to navigate the social world. This control, however, is not easily detectable. It is implicit and internalized, and Foucault suggests that it is self-governing and self-surveying. Here, I present to you the scientific objectification of Sarah Bartman, who was brought to Europe in 1810 to be exhibited as the erotic exotic freak, Hotento Venus. She is arguably one of the famous study of scientific validation of gendered racism. According to Silverman, 1992, the differentiation between the gaze and the look suggests that the voyeuristic male gaze inevitably structures narratives of privileged position he occupies. In other words, the narratives produced on her body, Sarah Bartman, was governed by a Eurocentric privileged position which disseminated the understanding of her seeming otherness. Further, Foucault sheds light on the process of self-subjectification with his analysis on self-surveillance and self-discipline. To demonstrate this, he uses the Panopticon, a prison system created by the British social reformer Jeremy Bentman. He states, All that is needed is to place a supervisor at a central tower and to shut up in each cell a madman, a patient, a condemned man, a worker, a schoolboy, etc. The panoptic mechanism arranges spatial unities that make it possible to see constantly and recognize immediately. So the theory states that the inmates assume that they are subject to constant surveillance. Therefore, they conduct themselves accordingly. And this is precisely what we see uh, with women's conduct. Our bodies are subject to constant scrutiny and surveillance to the point that we self-survey and conduct ourselves accordingly. Jill, 2007, unpacks the post-feminist sensibility and she asserts that the porno-chic representation of women 
is marked by a shift from being a sex object to becoming a sexual subject. She states that girls and women are invited to become a particular kind of self and endowed with agency on conditions that it is used to conduct oneself as a subject closely resembling the heterosexual male fantasy that is found in pornography. So is this truly an advancement to female empowerment or are we merely internalizing the male gaze? In so far as to expose scientific objectivity as historically contingent, we need to understand the privileged partial perspective of knowledge. How Haraway's concept of situated knowledge insists that particular conditions in which knowledge is produced at some level reflect the social identities and social locations of knowledge producers. It identifies how dominant conceptions and practices of knowledge, attribution, acquisition, and justification disadvantages women and other subordinated groups. That is, knowledge is regarded as socioculturally based with the patterning of concepts and procedures arising from social interactions and social contexts. McKinnon, 1989, argues that men constitute women as women by sexually objectifying them, that is, by representing their natures as essentially sexually subordinated uh, to men and treating them accordingly. Further, Haraway writes, this gaze signifies the unmarked position of man and white. One of the many nasty toners of the word objectivity to feminist ears in scientific and technological, late industrial, militarized, racist, and a male-dominant society. So to expand on Foucault's analysis, we can see how the late industrial racist male dominant gaze as the panopticon where we internalize the demands of the historically contingent understanding of the female body. Now, how does this tie to the way in which we conduct ourselves in capitalist society? Singh's, um, sorry, building on Anand Singh's definition of super exploitation, she explains that super exploitation is seen as an exploitation that demands um, so called non economic factors such as gender, race, ethnicity, nationality, religion, sexuality, age, and citizenship status. Super exploitation is exploitation greater than might be expected from the general economic principle. She asserts that the most important feature of contemporary capitalism is its intersectionality, that is, the diversity through which women and men of varied class niches and racial, ethnic, national, sexual, and religious position negotiate power and inequality. Take the example of Nicki Minaj. We see this pla we see this idea take place with Ni Nicki Minaj hypersexuality, nearly theatrical images of her black body through a music videos, public appearances, which serve as a sexual product for public consumption. She quite literally objects herself, objectifies herself as an object of consumption. So what led to my investigation was actually the release of Cardi B's hit song, um, WAP. There are two parts of the song that I found exceptionally interesting. One was in her first verse where she said, I don't cook, I don't clean, but let me tell you I got this ring. Which to me indicates an attempt to challenge, um, 
the heterosexual oh man i apologize so this was this for me was an attempt to challenge the female heteronormative traditional practices and then following her verse was megan stallion where she says gobble me swallow me drip down side of me etc which for me was a shift in female agency because previously uh, the rap industry um, used women as mere sexual props but here we could see that they are acting as agents but is this enough for the advancement of the feminist movement i don't think so i argue that the overt sexual expression of women in today's media is not yet a sign of empowerment because it because it simply um displays the eurocentric male objectification to self-subjectification thank you